So tonight I'm going to finish this basket and uh, the only thing I need to do really is to make it look like there's more collateral flaking on here. Collateral just means flakes that go to the center and there may or may not be a median ridge but usually there is when you do collateral flaking. So I'm, I'm going to try to make it ridge-like in the middle. If not, it's okay because these were not perfect. And I looked them up. They are ground on the stems here. And it's a very rare type. Okay, so keep that in mind. Very rare. It's not typical of points made of the, in that era. What era is it? 12,000, 8,000 B. P before present, which means older than Clovis. What book is it? It's this book, this 13th edition, but you can get, I think it's up to the 15th edition from Barnes and Noble. Don't get it somewhere where they're going to charge you a whole lot of money. It should be like 30 some odd dollars. You can also get a 12th edition uh, from, I forget now who sells it, but I'll put the link in the, in the comments. Okay, so Haskett, Haskett Lynn Cooley points later evolved into Alberta and Agate Basin. A, an extremely rare type. See that? An extremely rare type with only a few dozen complete examples known. Okay? Not typical of paleo stuff. But it is a paleo point. Okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to look very carefully, and this is going to be slow, perhaps, slower than usual, which is not good because I don't like it to go slow, but to do collateral flaking, you've got to plan each and every strike. You can't just wing it. No. The collateral flaking is not perfect, so you don't have exactly one for one. On these, when I saw, when I look in the book, it's not exact. The, there's there's a lot of flaking on the stem area, and uh, less flaking up on the blade area. All right, let's see. They call it tertiary flaking. Yeah, to smooth out this area a little bit. It's probably just uh, incidental because they need to make this nice and smooth for the grinding so it'll grind well so it'll be nice and straight when you grind it down okay so I'll be focusing on trying to get the edges set up to do these little flakes I've already got a bunch in there that go to the center but not enough to make it look right so that's what I'm going to do. Try to make it look right. Got my black glove. I'm going to wear through this pretty fast, but that's okay. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to do the collateral flaking in a random way. And yes, you don't have to be sequential. It doesn't have to be sequentially collateral. It can be randomly collateral. It's not like collateral damage. It's it's not spelled the same way, I don't think. Or maybe it is. I don't know. Let me see. Let's see. <laughs> they call it parallel flaking in the description there. So they got it wrong. So I can't quickly look up the spelling of the collateral. And yeah, I don't have my gaiters on, so I'm going to get flakes in my shoe. We'll have to interrupt the regularly scheduled programming every now and then. In case I get a flake in my shoe, I usually try to remove them right away. Because I don't like taking chances. I often forget that I got a flake in my shoe that I did not remove. And I regret it later. 
Okay, so I'm just going to look for opportunities, opportunities to take flakes. And try not to overshoot the middle. Like I did just then. It's going to take some finesse to go only to the middle. Yep. Why did they do that in the past? Because they don't want to they don't want a weak point. They want it nice and strong so they leave it thick in the middle. But they also want to be able to sharpen it. So they thin down the edges with these flakes. I don't want to go too far with the flakes there. I want to go that far. See, just to the center. That's it. Yeah, like that. And then minimal, minimal pressure flaking to, to fix it up or to make it sharp at the end. Last stage is always sharpening, so I'm going to sharpen it. But I'm going to sharpen it in a way that doesn't take away from the flake pattern, which means I'm not going to make long sharpening flakes. Just because I want to make it look right. The, the reason why they did it this way is because it's stronger to have a median ridge. Yeah. It's a strong way of making the point. When you don't have a... When you do have a median ridge. When you do have a median ridge, it's stronger. Okay. But it doesn't get... It, um, let's see, how do I say this? It's easier to create a median ridge when it when these flakes don't travel over the center. And it's relatively easy to make the flakes that don't travel past center. You just need to tap it just slightly to get it go to get it to go through the center. Just slight tapping. Did they do this with indirect percussion back in the day? I have no idea. But it's one way to do it. Yeah. If they knew about indirect percussion, they, they would be smart to use it because it doesn't take much effort. But who knows, it could be pressure flaking it because pressure flaking can give you lots of control over the flaking, which is important if you want this kind of thing. This is a highly delicate procedure. Every flake is different, so I'm not, I'm not using the same amount of force every time. Every flake is different. You gotta tweak it just a little bit for every flake. Of course, when it has a high spot in the middle, the flakes tend to stop there, so it makes it a little bit easier to shoot the flake to the middle and not go past the middle. But it's not that easy. Nope. Because you can misjudge easily and shoot right, right past the middle. And thin it unintentionally. Yeah. Without meaning to. You, it'll get thin if you go past the center line. So what am I doing? I'm just trying to make it nice and even. Yeah. Yeah, for cosmetic reasons. Because it doesn't have to be perfect. 
doesn't have to be perfect. The Heskit doesn't have to be perfect. What if I drive a flake that unbalances it? Oh well. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. What does it mean to unbalance it? If I scoop out too much, it won't be consistently tapered or whatever. Yeah. It's got to be consistent from the side view, I, I would think. If they're looking for strength, it wouldn't make much sense to make it all wonky with dips, too many dips here and there that weaken it. It should, ni it should be nice and even and well tapered, I would imagine. But who knows? I haven't seen the side view, so I'm kind of guessing. Kind of because you can pretty much gather what's going on by looking at the way the flakes are made. Pretty much. It's, it's not that difficult to figure out what the side view might look like. But I might be surprised at how thick it is on the real ones. The real ones might be much thicker than this. Which would surprise me, yeah. Because it's not that easy to keep it really thick. Believe it or not. Because you got to make multiple passes to get a nice median ridge. Multiple passes means it gets thinner and thinner. So there you go. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. I just randomly put in flakes that go to the center. Some of them overshot the center a little bit. Which is okay. Yeah. But for the most part they go to the center. And there's kind of a median ridge. It's just not very pronounced. And there's areas where I could eliminate some lumps to make it more regular. Yeah. We can try that. Just for grins and giggles. So there's a lump right here. If I take that off, it'll be nice and even. But I don't know if I want to do it. I, I gotta prepare it very carefully. Yeah, I'll do it. I will do it. Oops, I forced to use the dark pad. The pad from the dark side. Yeah. So how am I going to sharpen it? I'm just going to do that like, like that. I'm just going to pick at it a little bit to sharpen it. But for now, what I'm trying to do is I'm going to try to shoot a flake right in here to eliminate the rise in the contour right there. 
that's the last spot that I need to remove something to make it look nice and smooth and, and regular. Because uh, thick areas can also per, uh, cause a, a, a weak spot on either side of the thick spot. So on either, th either side of this thick spot uh, is weaker because it's thick there and it, uh, it's, it'll break easier on either side of it. Whereas if it's distributed evenly as far as thickness goes, it bends evenly, you know, it stresses evenly all the way across. It kind of distributes the stress. You don't have stress points or concentrations of stress. In certain areas, if it's nice and even. All right. See, I only have one shot. That's the problem. I gotta make it count. Why is it a problem? Because it's hard to do. It's easier to get to accomplish the goal if you have more than one opportunity to do it. If you like, if you mess up the first time, if you have another opportunity. It's easier to achieve the goal. So I had to be very, very careful. Right? Right. I eliminated the lump, but there's still one right there. There's still a lump that I think I can remove. Yeah. Luckily, obsidian is easy to nap, relatively speaking. So it's not, it's not too hard to do it. I just got to make sure I don't hit too hard. Yeah. And I don't, make sure I don't hit too softly either. Same problems either way. That was slightly too hard. Ever so slightly. Just a little bit too much force. You hardly need any force at all. That one stepped. didn't grind it ahead of time it looked like it was already ground down enough yes it did but looks we're deceiving where I didn't hit it hard enough either way is that why they're so narrow because it's so difficult to do this flaking it's not that difficult really it just um, it's easier to do on a narrow point if you if it's already narrow and then do it it's it's easier than than doing it on a wide point that's for sure took too much of the edge but luckily it's a hasket it doesn't need to be wide yeah And now I gotta take down a whole edge, which is not a bad thing. It's just gonna take a little more time to finish it. It's probably better if I take it down with pressure. But yeah, you know, if you mess up, it's got to get more narrow. So that could be another reason why they're so narrow. But I think it just, they're just narrow because it's easier to run the flakes that way.
easier to run them to the center without having them mess up. Because the median ridge makes it strong. Get it? Good. Oops. Okay. Here I am thinking that you can see. I was looking at the viewfinder with my peripheral vision. I shouldn't be doing that. I just get a habit now of looking at the view here in my peripheral vision as I'm napping. And it doesn't always work well. Sometimes you get a blurry image. You don't need to see this part anyway. Everyone's already an expert at doing this. Pressure flaking stuff. I like my pads to be equal on both sides. That way I don't have to keep paying attention to the orientation of it. But a half moon is good. I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you. The reason why I make mine symmetrical is so I don't have to worry about how it's oriented. It's just one less thing to think about. And yes, I gotta be super careful about how I nap this. Because I want to keep the edge nice in case I need to run a flake. Yeah, I'm going to run some more flakes down this stem. Just to uh, thin down the edge a little bit. Even though this is the handle portion. They still did it the same way with a median median ridge. See that one fanned out a lot. I don't know how to get them long and narrow, or short and narrow, unless I use a really fine pointed flaker. If I put a fine point on the tip of that, then it's easier to run narrower flakes. And then you're going to get good at making them long. So, but you can make long, narrow flakes. Long, narrow flakes with a pointed flaker. Yeah. With pressure or percussion. Dang it, I took too much off. So since this is an extremely rare point, were they not used for hunting? That's a good question. They could be good luck points or gifts. Yeah. Or 
or whatever. Just not for hunting or not for general use. Because of the rarity might indicate that they're not used for everyday things. It might indicate that. It might also indicate that they use them all up. That's why there's none. That's why there's not many. Because they use them all up. They broke them and then they used the pieces for something. Heavily used. So it could be either way. They're very rare because they were heavily used up. Exhausted, so to speak. Or they were not used at all. That's why they exist. Or that's why they exist in small numbers, I should say. So always a step fracture near the end. I got a feeling these edges were not perfectly straight. So I'm just going to pick them so they can get sharp without worrying about them being perfectly straight. They might be zigzaggy on the real ones. They look zigzaggy on the real ones. But without a side view, I can't be positive. So I'm just going to guess that they were zigzaggy. Yep. It's consistent enough. It's probably too thin for a hasket, but oh well. I tried to run flakes on either side. I tried to get try to get it nice and convex with a slight median ridge. It's not like an Eden point. I will get into those too, but they take longer than this. You know, Scott's Plus and Edens. When they get narrow, they put in a median ridge. But it takes longer than this. Like I said. Okay. Why does it take so long? Well, it might not take look that long once I get used to it. It doesn't make much sense to, to take such a long time when... It was such a hard life back in paleo times. Why did they do it? Maybe the life was not that hard. Maybe they figured it out. They, they knew how to follow a herd efficiently. Yeah. They didn't have horses, so they didn't ride around on horseback to follow the herd. They must have figured out a way to do it. without transportation of that sort. Maybe they were tough guys that just walked all the way. Yeah. They just walked to follow the herd. Or ran. Everybody running. That would be some tough, tough people. Yep. Okay, so it's just I'm just gonna pick at the edges.
think the edge is less wonky down here where it's ground down just to make it easier to grind it to dull it you might say well there's already dull spots why are you why are you chipping on the dull spots already because it's just too wonky it's still going to be a little wonky but I don't want it to be too wonky I don't want it to be too chaotic it's just too chaotic for my taste that's the only reason why I'm continuing it even though I've already ground it down once I'm going to be picking at the whole edge to make it look nice and even so I think that's one of the whole ideas behind the point is to make a strong point so if it's nice and even it's stronger that way refer back to the stress concentration points statements I don't know, some of these have flat or dished out bases. Not thin, I don't know. Some little stiff fractures there, but see that? I don't know. I don't know if I should worry about those. All this just to make it easier to grind down. Yep, that's it. All of that just to make it easier to grind down to a dull, consistent edge.
and to make it look right supposedly There's some spots on here that are real thin. So that's not good. Those thin areas won't grind down very well. When the edge is too thin, it doesn't grind down very well. It just grinds down a little bit. It doesn't leave a feeling of dullness as much as a, a fat edge know what I mean jelly bean The, uh, the more it crunches, the worse the sharpness. It just needs to pop. I'm getting some crunching because I'm not too worried about it. But in a perfect world, you'd hear just a snap or a pop every time a flake is removed. You wouldn't hear any crunching going on or very minimal. I would talk during this phase, but this is very difficult, believe it or not. It's difficult not to crush the edge. Now, I don't know if this is how they were made. They could have sharpened it up beforehand. And then whenever they, wherever they needed to take a flake, they just dulled that one little area. And then took the flake. And then maybe, maybe not sharpened it after they took that flake. Because the edge is already sharp, except for that one little striking area. Or that one little 
pressure flake area. But that takes even longer to do than this. Because you got to prepare each area. Instead of running the grinder all the way across like that, you're running, you're just grinding each individual little area where you take a flake. So you got, you got to put the flaker down, I mean the file down, or the abrader, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, for each and every flake. Rather than just one sh -ch 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 -ch, and then flake it, do a pass on each side, and then do the sharpening. This is faster, even though it seems like it's, it's a snail paste. This is faster than the other way where you would sharpen it up, but then look for spots where you can dull it and take a flake and don't worry about resharpening. When you do it that way, the flake scars are more visible. It looks bolder. There isn't so many flakes cluttering the, the edge. Yeah. But it takes forever. You'd be sitting there making a point for days. And maybe that's what they did. I don't know. Must be nice to have days to make your point. Instead of just hours. How many days it take you? 11. Dang it. Took mine. 15. What's your secret? <laughs> I don't think that was a conversation back in the day. It might have been. You never know. It, well, I can see that maybe that was a conversation if these were traded like money. Then yeah, the longer you spend on it, the more valuable it is. As long as it looks like you spent time on it. You can spend days on it and have it look all cruddy. Maybe they were money, I don't know. It doesn't seem like a good a good store of wealth when it breaks so easy. What happened to all your money? I broke it. Is that where the word broke comes from? You know what? That's an excellent question. Somebody answer it. I don't know what the answer. I'm broke. You broke it, didn't you? You you traded everything you had for that point, and then now you broke it, so now you're broke. Yeah. <laughs> the world may never know. Is that what that means? The world will never know. May never know. Why are you grinding this so much? It's such a waste of bleed. No, it isn't. This is a handle. Yeah. Yeah, dum dum. I think it's a knife. Personally, personally, I think it's a knife. It could be a little nicer. Let's see. Take a few more flakes. The object is to make it nicer. The pressure flaking is not going to be up to par with the percussion flaking. Yeah.
There's just one little spot right there. It's just a handle, so don't worry about it. Yeah. Too slippery to do a percussion flake on that one. The other side looks pretty good. If I do say so. Come on. I'm getting tired. Well, it's only 47 minutes. That's because it's crunch time and I gotta make a bunch of stuff. I've been working all day. I've been up since 5.30 or something. Crazy hour. And it'd be okay if I could go to bed at like 8.30 or 9.30 or 10.30, but no, I don't think I went to sleep at 1.30. Yeah. C'est la vie. ground down these are if they're ground down a lot I gotta make this edge more conducive to grinding Does it always proceed this slowly? No, if, if this is the only point that you've ever made in your whole life, you can knock these out pretty fast. I would imagine, like with any other point, if, you, if this is the only point you've ever made your whole life, you get used to it. Like, if I were to make a hundred of these, I'd find some way to streamline the process and make them faster. It might be a little bit fat right there, but some of these are like that. See that? A little bit fat. Now the tips, they vary from not very sharp to really sharp. And uh, the bases, some of them are flat. Some of them have a little concavity. Some of them have, have two concavities. Yeah, but that one's flat. So I'm going to leave mine like this. Yeah, that's it. That's it for the hesket. That's it for the hesket. Yeah. That's it. I thought you'd just get warmed up. It's only 40 or 50 minutes. 
Yeah, I know. Sometimes I'm just getting warmed up at 50 minutes. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at the final result. I tried to get a median ridge, or thereabouts, collateral without a median ridge. I should, it's closer to being collateral without a median ridge. Yeah, because some of these flakes went past halfway. But at least there's bold flakes on either side. And it is fairly thick, comparatively speaking. And uh, it's easily made into a knife. Easily. Yeah. Ceremonial or otherwise. And maybe the uh, smaller ones were the the dark points or whatever. That's what I would do. I'd, I'd use the smaller ones for the dark points and the larger ones for the knives. That's what I would do. There are small ones in the book. Okay. So there it is. I didn't show it enough. Not much to show. The uh, obsidian... It's hard to see the flay scars on this type of obsidian. But it is a triple flow. It's got clear spots. Can you see? You can't see. I need to see those clear spots. Oh, there it is. See that? Now you see it. Now you don't. They're mostly down in here. They're mostly down in the handle where you won't be able to see it anyway. Yeah. Cool, huh? I got an even cooler one over here somewhere. It'll be in the auction. Did I have a cooler one in here? Uh, we'll see. I can't remember now. Anyway, I like this type of triple flow. It's cool. All right. There you go. That's it.